Um, seems like I can start. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for inviting me in this, at this beautiful event. Um, the atmosphere here is, here is really great for collaboration and um, we've got a plenty of interesting talks. So uh, let, thank you and uh, let's start. Um, my talk is named Reducibility of Metrics on the Real Line and what we are going to discuss is uh, the notion of uh, computable categoricity for the space of real numbers. So uh, first of all, we're going to look at uh, some history of the question. Um, there will be a briefing on uh, computable categoricity for uh, computable structures, then a little bit on uh, the history of study of computable categoricity in computable analysis. Then we are going to give some definitions, some basic definitions for um, uh, the, the framework of computable analysis and um, then define a reducibility we are going to use in the following work. Um, then construct some computably inequivalent metrics with respect to that uh, reducibility and um, construct some metrics that have a somewhat stronger uh, property of inequivalence, namely that for uh, copies of the real line equipped with these metrics uh, are not computably homeomorphic to each other. Um, uh, it will be revealed that it is possible to construct a kind of amount of uh, such metrics. So we will con conclude that uh, the space of real numbers as a metric space is of computable dimension omega. Uh, and then we will take a look a little bit in the future and uh, see what generalization can be done. Um, okay. We say that computable model M is autostable or computably categorical if any computable copy of it is computably isomorphic to it. Uh, if that is not the case and there exists some copies of it uh, computably inequivalent to it, then number of such copies is called the computable dimension of M. Um, these notions were first introduced by Maltsev <coughs> Uh, who proved that any finitely generated computable model is computably categorical and um, other than that and some examples of um, decidable computable models, uh, it was seen that natural examples of computable categorical structures are quite rare. Um, a very famous example of computable structure that is computable categorical is uh, the countable dense linear order without endpoints. Um, though natural numbers with its usual ordering uh, are not computable categorical, um, some kind of examples were constructed by Froelich and Shefferson and Maltsev uh, in the theories of uh, fields and abelian groups. Then uh, Nuttazin showed that a decidable structure is either computably categorical or it possesses a, an infinite amount of uh, computable copies of it that are not computably um, isomorphic to it. Then uh, by different authors were uh, constructed a bunch of examples of uh, theories, models of those are either of computable dimension one or omega. Those are uh, algebraically closed fields, real closed fields, abelian groups, linear orderings, Boolean algebras, and uh, delta two categorical structures. Um, at this point, maybe um, a natural question is, um, do there exist 
computable models with computable with finite computable dimension. Uh, quite a bit of effort was done, and Gunshrof proved that for all finite n, there exists a computable structure of computable dimension n. Um, also, the notion of relative computable categoricity is of interest. We say that uh, for a degree d, computable model M is decomputably categorical if any computable copy of it is decomputably isomorphic to it. Um, the study of autostability spectrums and degrees of autostability was also initiated, uh, and there have been a plenty of fruitful results. Um, we're going to only uh, uh, to only cite one result, a famous result by Hirschfeld, Kusainov, Schur, and Slinko, um, that is formulated quite in a quite more difficult manner, but we will stick to this uh, simple formulation. Um, there are some theories that are complete uh, relatively to other stability spectrums in the sense that for any computable model, uh, if it has some computability, uh, some other stability spectrum, then there exist models in these, uh, in these theories that have the same other stability spectrum. Uh, these theories are directed graphs, symmetric and irreflexive graphs, uh, partial orderings, lattices, rings, integral domains, uh, commutative semi-groups, and two-step nullpotent groups. Okay. Um, the study of computability theory and analysis and computable, and the notion of computable numbers in particular are um, maybe as old as the notion of Turing machine since both notions of computable numbers and uh, of Turing machine first emerged, emerged in uh, the famous work Turing in uh, 1936. Um, we said that a real number is computable if its dec decimal expansion is computable. Uh, Turing figured out that neither addition nor multiplication are computable with respect to this representation. And in fact, um, the reason were pure, was purely topological. These functions are not uh, even continuous with respect to decimal representation. So um, another approach should have been uh, Should have been emerged. Should, should have emerged uh, for computable analysis, and um, the fun fact is that different representations of the reals might lead to the same notion of computable real number, but uh, to different notions of a computable real function. Um, some representations are listed here by Dedekind cuts, on the left to right Dedekind cuts. Uh, <coughs> Computably convergent sequences of rationals, continuous fractions, uh, just not mm, not necessarily computably convergent sequences of rationals, and so on and so forth. Um, there have been several approaches to computable analysis historically. Uh, computable analysis in the sense of banach mazar then Moskovakis uh, studied. Uh, constructive metric spaces. Some effort was done by uh, Soviet constructive school. Uh, more recently, in 70s and 80s, uh, Poirot and Richard studied computable categoricity uh, and just computability in Banach spaces um, in terms that are really close to what we are going to, uh, to be using further. And what we are going to be using further is uh, the representation approach of Kreitz and Weirach, uh, which first emerged in their paper of 1987. Um, so for the work of Porel and Richards, um, they studied 
computability in Banach spaces and uh, main source uh, in our talk will be their book, Computability in Analysis and Physics. Um, there they studied the question, among others, the question of um, uh, the notion of computability structure, which is uh, the collection of all computable sequences of elements of a uh, given Banach space. Um, in a certain very general case, namely for uh, separable Banach spaces, this structure is uh, just generated by a uh, dense countable subset. So the study of computability structure is effectively the same thing as the study of uh, computability induced by the choice of dense countable subset, basically. Um, they proved that um, separable Hilbert space is computable categorical, that is, all computability structures in Hilbert space are computably isometric to each, to each other. Um, the fact is that um, they observed that uh, the study of computability structure or uh, of dense countable subsets um, only makes sense for up to computable isometry for some reasons. Um, and it was proved that there exists a structure in the space L1 that is not computably isometric to the standard, uh, standard structure. So L1 is not computable categorical. Um, recently results in this, uh, in this field were taken a lot further. Uh, Alexander Melnikov in 2000, 2013 proved that uh, L1 is not computable categorical as a metric space compared to uh, the previous result that L1 is not computa computable categorical um, in the signature of Banach spaces. Uh, actually, he proved quite a lot of results in this paper. Uh, he proved that counter space is, counter space is uh, computable categorical, um, as well as uh, some criteria for subspaces of Rn to be computable categorical were established there. Um, and for the space of continuous functions, continuous real functions, it was proved that uh, it is not computably categorical uh, as well. Molnikov asked a question in, uh, in his paper uh, concerning LP for different P. Uh, what's up for uh, LP where P is not one or two? Um, Timothy McNichol in 2015 gave uh, an answer to this question. Namely, he proved that LP is computably categorical if and only if uh, it is Hilbert space. Also, we'll cite a result of Zvonko Lezovich, who um, studied effectively compact uh, computable metric spaces. Um, and he proved that these spaces are uh, computable categorical. Um, more results for the space of uh, continuous functions were um, were proven uh, by Melnikov and Ng in 2015. Um, they proved that C01 is not computably categorical in a whole bunch of different signatures. It is not computably, computably categorical as a Banach space, uh, nor as a Banach algebra. And they also proved that uh, C01 is a metric space, has computable dimension omega. Yet another result by McNichol and Stoll, they proved that LP uh, for computable P not equal to two, has computable dimension omega. So um, in this approach, uh, the authors take a certain metric space and vary 
a dense substructure. Uh, and we take an other approach. Uh, let's assume we have given with a certain topological space, maybe the space of real numbers or some other, uh, and fixed uh, countable dense substructure in it. Uh, we can take, for instance, rationals within uh, the space of real numbers because it seems quite natural to do so. Uh, and now we have our metrics. We try to construct a metric that uh, it is computable with respect to uh, the rational numbers. Uh, it induces the usual topology on the real line, but it um, is not computably equivalent to the real line in a certain way. Um, so it will be shown that there are infinitely many um, inequivalent metrics, and there are infinitely many metrics for which uh, a stronger property holds uh, that of the copies of the real line equipped with these metrics are not computably homeomorphic to each other. Okay, um, some definitions. Um, first, to define a computable function uh, in the bare space. Um, so, a computable functional in the bare space is a function that is pointwise defined by some oracle computable function. That is, for uh, some computable function phi e, phi of f equals g for total um, functions f and g if phi e with oracle f of n equals to g of n for all n. Um, a representation of a set is just straight up uh, a generalization of the notion of um, uh, enumeration for uncountable sets. We say that mm, uh, a representation of a set X of cardinality at most continuum is a partial subjection from the bare space to, to X. Um, so we associate the elements of X with um, infinite sequences of neutral numbers. Seems like a, uh, seems like the topology is of uh, a great concern here and indeed um, any representation defines its, its own topology on the underlying set and um, for, for example, for metric spaces, uh, we define special representation that is named Cauchy representation and it turns out that uh, the topology of Cauchy representation is the same that topology induced by metrics so this notion is quite bold, uh, well founded. Now we can uh, define partial functions on uh, arbitrary represented sets. Let x and y uh, be represented by delta x and delta y uh, and we say that a partial function f from x to y is computable with respect to delta x and delta y if uh, it is realized on the bare space by some computable functional phi, uh, as shown in the diagram. Um, Weirauch was first to define a reducibility to, for representations that is just the same as uh, computable reducibility for enumerations. Uh, we say that delta one and delta two, uh, representation delta one of x is computable reducible to uh, representation delta two of the same space if uh, delta one names can be translated to delta two names by some computable functional fee. Uh, or equivalently, uh, the identity is computable with respect to delta 1 and delta 2. Mm, it can be easily seen in this diagram by shrinking f to um, identity. Um, where I'll show that representations of a 
set X form a lattice with uh, in this ordering. Um, here's a picture with some representations of uh, the reels, stolen for some slides of Vasco Bratka. Um, each arrow means uh, lower representation is computably reducible to upper representation, and upper representation is not continuously reducible to uh, lower representation, where continuously reducible is uh, the same as computably reducible, but you basically uh, change the word computable to continuous. Okay, um, let's now consider the class of metric spaces. Uh, first of all, we give the notion of an effective metric space. And um, effective metric space is just a complete separable metric space with fixed countable subset and enumeration of this subset. Um, if, in addition, the distance function is a computable real number uh, uniformly in indices of the elements of this countable dense substructure, then uh, the space is called computable. There are a lot of examples, natural examples of computable metric spaces, for instance, just real line or RN or LP for LP and so forth. Um, so Cauchy representation of uh, the metric space is defined as follows. Um, um, names for elements of X are just uh, computable sequences that converge to X uh, effectively in the way that um, we can always measure the distance from um, Uh, current approximation to the limit, to the x. Um, now um, that we have Cauchy representations for metric spaces, we just define uh, reducibility for metrics. We say that metric row 1 and row 2, um, metric row 1 is computably reducible to row 2 if the same holds for their respective Cauchy representations. Um, a very simple lemma, if uh, the following inequality holds for row 1 and row 2, then the inverted inequality uh, holds for computable reducibility of row 1 to row 2. So uh, if row 2 is not greater in values than row 1, then row two is computably reducible to row two. Um, we'll be using this uh, lemma in the following. Now first results for the space of real numbers. Uh, first of all, it turns out that uh, all convex computable metrics on the real line are computably equivalent to each other. Um, where convex stands for uh, for any two points in R, there exists an exact min midpoint uh, between these two points. So uh, for complete metric spaces, convexity is just the same uh, that the property, mm, that the existence of uh, a straight path between two points for any two points. Um, it can be proved quite easily. Um, we first know that uh, convex metrics respect the uh, usual ordering of R in the sense that uh, if point A is located between points B and C, then uh, the distance from A to B and from A to C is strictly less than the distance from B to C. Um, using that, um, we go as follows. Uh, let's assume we 
have a name xn for an element x uh, in the metric row one. Using that, we can construct a sequence of, uh, of nested rational intervals that converges to x. Then we'll just measure um, the length, uh, the lengths of uh, these intervals in the metric row two and pick those who are short enough uh, to form a sequence that is effectively converging to x uh, in the metric row two. That's just it. Um, from this, we see that uh, computably inequivalent metrics in the real line should be non-convex. First result. Uh, second result. There exists a computable metric that is strictly uh, computably reducible to the standard metric. The idea is quite straightforward. Uh, we diagonalized against any computable functional phi e on a distinct interval. So uh, diagonalization process runs separately for each uh, functional. Um, first, we pick an element A in, uh, in this interval and compute for some, element, uh, for some name for this A um, a finite segment of the output of if F, E of F. Uh, this finite A output is always computed only using a finite initial segment of the name F. So we can now pick uh, rational B close to A so that uh, this initial segment F bar is also uh, an initial segment of the name for B. And then we just um, make a deformation uh, of uh, of the interval IE so that B is far enough from A in the new metric. And we obtain the um, diagonal contradiction in the sense that um, there exists a name in the standard, standard metric for B that is mapped by, F, uh, by phi E to the sequence that is not a name at all uh, in the new metric. Extra effort should be uh, done to ensure that this new metric is computable, and that's it. Um, now, of course, uh, having constructed one metric, we want to construct two, three, an infinite amount of metrics. Uh, and then it's, in fact, also possible to uh, prolong uh, the construction downwards and make chains of metrics uh, within uh, uh, ordering by reducibility, by computable reducibility. Uh, it is in fact possible to uh, embed the whole functional tree omega to the power of less than omega into this ordering. Um, Nikola Bajenov wants us a question if the same could be done for like uh, um, transfinite orderings, some ordinals, and indeed it is possible to isomorphically embed any constructive ordinal uh, into this space. Um, at this point, uh, we see that this set of all computable metrics is quite large and diverse. And uh, the next step should be to show it's, um, uh, to show that it is not computably enumerable or uh, effectively infinite. This may seem like a, um, a very hard task because we now want to diagonalize against not the uh, plane metric or uh, metric that resembles it locally, but uh, against arbitrary metrics on the real line that can be, geometrically speaking, uh, very twisted and um, non-standardly locking, let's put it this way. But um, actually, 
the exact look of the metric is not really uh, affecting us. And it can be proved that the class of uh, inequivalent computable metrics is effectively infinite. That is, for any uh, computable sequence of inequivalent metrics, we can effectively construct yet another metric that is uh, not equivalent to all of the above metrics. So um, we can construct downwards, but not upwards. Uh, so far, uh, I found it to be impossible to um, construct some metrics that are higher than some given metric in this um, ordering. In particular, it is not known if this ordering of computable metrics uh, is upper or lower similarities. However, it can be shown that uh, this ordering is downward closed. Uh, and indeed, for any two computable metrics, we just pick their pointwise maximum. And uh, using the fact that it is uh, pointwise greater than both row one and row two, we conclude that uh, reverted inequality holds for computable reducibility of row two, both row one and row two. Um, now we turn to uh, a stri more, more strong notion of an equivalence for metrics. Um, now, um, final topology of a representation is the, f the biggest topology of X uh, with respect to which delta, uh, representation delta is continuous. Uh, this is the notion we were speaking of earlier. Um, definition, Red, let representations delta one and delta two of X have the same final topology. And we say that um, delta one is weakly reducible to delta two if there exists a uh, some computable homeomorphism of X with respect to delta one and delta two. Uh, it easily follows that uh, CH reducibility is weaker than C reducibility because uh, if delta 1 is C reducible to delta 2, that then uh, the identity is computable and the identity is a homomorphism, so delta 1 is also CH reducible to delta 2. Um, it can be shown that there exists a commutable metric that is strictly reduced, CH reducible to the standard metric. So there exists a commutable homeomorphism from this metric, uh, from the real line equipped with this metric to the standard real line, but not vice versa. Um, now the construction is a little bit more difficult. Um, Now we pick um, now uh, that we should diagonalize not uh, against the identity but against any co um, computable homeomorphism of the real line. We should pick elements from the entire real line and try to capture them within uh, the interval we we are going uh, we are using. Uh, for diagonalization against phi e. So um, we search for some a and b is earlier uh, on the whole real line. Try um, wait until uh, some computation of a uh, finite segment of na names of their images is terminated. Then we make sure that A and B are mapped to distinct points in IE. Uh, and once it has proven to be true, uh, we make a pick uh, just as above. And um, using the fact that 
for continuous function Um, it is basically the intermediate point theorem. Using this theorem, we prove that there exists some C between A and B that is uh, <coughs> mapped to the top of the pick. So, uh, it's earlier we come to a contradiction. So, uh, now we heavily use the fact that the standard metric is convex because if it were non-convex, that uh, such C might not exist. And this is a real a very big disadvantage of this construction. Um, also, it doesn't permit construction, constructing chains uh, in this new ordering. Although it's possible to construct anti-chains. Uh, there exists a countable amount of metrics that are computable and incomparable to each other with, with uh, respect to CH reducibility and C reducible to the standard metric. Uh, so we can conclude that in our framework, uh, the, space of re the space of real numbers with rationals fixed as a dense countable subset uh, has computable dimension omega. Um, now we can observe that the construction um, uses the fact that it is possible to um, The construction just uses uh, a countable amount of disjoint open balls in R to run uh, diagonalization on them separately. So an easy idea would be to extend the results on any connected spaces, uh, path connected spaces that is, uh, because in any path connected space we can pick two arbitrary points, then they are connected uh, with some path. Uh, and then we can pick distinct um, open balls along that path. And uh, extra effort should be done to ensure that uh, the, topology we're go um, the topology induced by metric we are going to construct is indeed the same. Um, And uh, for compact metric spaces, we should also make sure that the height of the peaks we are going to define uh, fades to zero when approaching infinity. So um, there is no discontinuity issues. Um, hypothesis one. Uh, I strongly believe that it is true. I have um, proved this on paper, but let's just put it as a hypothesis for now. Uh, our construction for computable reducibility works in any path connected computable metric space. That is, any path connected computable metric space. Uh, Uh, for metrics on this space, uh, we can embed omega to the power of less than omega uh, into the ordering uh, of computable reducibility. Um, then we can embed any constructive ordinal into this ordering, and the class of C in equivalent computable metrics on this space is effectively infinite. Now, uh, if an addition, this space is convex, that it can be proved that it is uh, of computable dimension omega. That is, there exists a countable amount of metrics that are not comparable, uh, CH comparable to each other. That is, uh, there is no computable homeomorphism 
between copies of X equipped with these metrics. Now, um, in the first hypothesis, we were uh, using path connectedness. But what if we only take connected metric spaces or even disconnected metric spaces? Is it possible to construct uh, inequality metrics in such spaces? And of course, uh, for weak reducibility and um, uh, non homeomorphic uh, copies of a given metric space, we see that convexity is a very un unnatural con condition to, uh, for existence of inequivalent metrics. In fact, it is uh, only a like a weak place of our construction rather than a, um, some topological condition. So the question is, does there exist, exist a construction, construction that is independent from convexity? And um, another question is that, can we prove uh, results similar to uh, C reducibility in the sense that can at least chains be constructed in uh, this ordering? Um, seems like that's it. Thank you for the attention. That is a good question. Uh, for, uh, it's a, for a wide class of metric spaces, uh, only infinite dimension is possible. So for any path connected spaces, path connected space, convex path connected space, um, infinite dimension is possible. So I guess that it is, um, very hard to um, prove the existence of a uh, space of finite dimension in some, some maybe natural example of such space. It must be some very broken space. Um, yes, we can study that, but uh, it's, it seems like a lot of work. Maybe, maybe we can do that. Yeah. <laughs>